So welcome to unit eight, motivation, emotion, and stress. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about theories and physiology of emotion, module 41. And these correspond to Meyer psychology for the AP course, third edition. So there are four learning targets for this particular module. First is to be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, describe our ability to communicate non-verbally. Then to discuss how the genders differ in their ability to communicate non-verbally. Um, discuss culture specific and culturally universal gestures and facial expressions and explain how our facial expressions actually influence our feelings. So how do we communicate non-verbally? So for Westerners, a firm handshake conveys an outgoing expressive personality. A glance can communicate intimacy with someone while darting eyes like looking away and your eyes darting all over may signal anxiety. When two people are passionately in love, they typically spend time, quite a lot of time in general, gazing into each other's eyes, according to this research. So a silent language of emotion. Hindu classic dance uses the face and body to effectively convey 10 different emotions. Um, really interesting image to the right there. Uh, and if you want to learn more about that, you can look up this research right there. So can humans detect nonverbal threats? We readily sent uh, sublimity, subliminally presented negative words such as snake or bomb. Um, and a single angry face will pop out of a crowd. We will like scan the crowd and see a really angry face um, pop out of a crowd. Um, in experiments using a series of physical, a series of faces that morph from anger to fear, physically abused children, according to research, are much quicker than other children to spot the signals of anger. So that's a way that shows us that experiences actually sensitize us to particular emotions. So shown a face that is 50% fear and 50% anger abused children are more likely to perceive anger than fear compared to non-abused children. Abused children's perceptions become sensitively attuned to glimmers of danger that many non-abused children miss. So this is one way in which, a very heartbreaking way in which experience influences our perception of emotion. How about deceit? How readily can we detect deceit? Despite our brain's emotion detecting skill, we often have difficulty discerning deceit. The behavioral differences between liars and truth tellers are too small for people to detect. So in terms of research, looking at 206 studies, people were just 54% accurate. So not much better than chance. And discerning truth from lies. So barely better than a coin toss. So we may think that we're really good at detecting lying, um, but research shows us that we're not. Um, very good at detecting deceit. So what is a Duchenne smile? Raised cheeks and activated muscles under the eyes suggest a natural smile in honor of the French physician who described it. So it's fascinating. I was actually just talking about this <laughs> in my regular life. How is modern texting impacted by the absence of emotion? Uh, so the absence of expressive emotion can make for ambiguous emotion in electronic communications, but uh, the advent of uh, emojis and GIFs, although I like to call them GIFs, uh, I know everybody mostly calls them GIFs, uh, let us kind of convey emotion with our, you know, our electronic communications. So that's a real, it's really fascinating that we're seeing the changes happen so rapidly that it just using emojis as a way to convey emotion in our messaging. Um, without the vocal nuances that signal whether our statement is serious, kidding, or sarcastic, um, we're in danger of Piaget's uh, egocentrism, you know, for failing to perceive how others interpret our message. So that's why we come up with things like LOL or JK, right? Because sometimes, and I, I can kind of remember, I'm a little bit older, when we first started using email a lot, we didn't have, we didn't, we didn't have uh, much LOL in going on and definitely no emojis yet. And sometimes it would be hard to interpret the tone of someone's email. And so I think that um, 
advent of all these uh, tools is actually helping us to be able to utilize electronic communications and still convey our emotions as well. So does emotion give a clue to gender? Researchers manipulated a gender neutral face. People were more likely to see it as male when it wore an angry expression and female when it wore a smile. So you can take a look at those images and see what, if you see any different, uh, would interpret one face as male versus female. What research has been conducted on gender and emotion? Well, researchers Kring and Gordon asked male and female students to watch film clips that were sad. Children with a dying parent, very, 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 very sad. Happy, like a slapstick comedy, or frightening, a man nearly falling off the ledge of a tall building. Researchers then watched the facial expressions of the men and women as they watched the clips. So the results were that male and female film viewers did not differ dramatically in self-reported emotions or physiological responses, but the women's faces showed much more emotions. And you can see the um, visual here to the right shows the, the differences between males and females. Does the meaning of gestures vary across cultures? Yes, <laughs> it does. And it's gotten world leaders in trouble. Uh, for example, US President Richard Nixon learned after making the North American AOK -okay sign before a welcoming crowd of Brazilians, he didn't realize it was a crude insult in that country. So it can leave some people in very un uncomfortable predicaments if they don't realize the, um, the varying meaning of gestures across cultures. Do facial expressions have different meanings in different cultures? Two investigative teams showed photographs of various facial expressions to people in different parts of the world and asked them to guess the emotion. These happiness, surprise, fear, sadness, anger, disgust. So the result, a smile's a smile the world around. Ditto for sadness. So we seem to have this cross-cultural similarity of understanding a smile, um, happiness and sad understanding sad emotional expressions. Other emotional expressions are less universally recognized. So is interpreting facial expressions an adaptive trait? Darwin, we've talked about him many times in this class, um, Charles Darwin argued that in prehistoric times before our ancestors communicated in words, they communicated via threats, greetings, and submission with facial expressions. So they shared experience, the sh their shared experiences help them survive. So how does context help us interpret emotion? Tears on the woman's face in the cartoon above make her expression seem sadder than the one on the right, right? So the context makes changes our interpretation of emotion. How does culture impact the amount of emotional expression? So individualistic cultures, as in Western Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and North America, display visible emotion more. Collectivist cultures, like those in Asia, Japan, like in Japan and China, often have less visible emotional displays. The mouth, often so expressive in North Americans, conveys less emotion in a Japanese person than do the eyes. So do all cultures express the same degree of emotion? Um, compared with their counterparts in China, where calmness is emphasized, European American leaders follow different what are called display rules. They express excited smiles six times more frequently in their official photos. You can see Joe Biden there looking super happy, super genuinely happy. Um, and I have noticed this as well. As even traveling, I am someone who's kind of outwardly happy a lot <laughs> and I smile um, quite a bit. And I think to some people it can be that from different cultures, it might be a little bit um, uh, disconcerting because I'm just a uh, fairly uh, easy to smile person. <laughs> so let's consider this research. Kazuo Mori and Hideko Mori conducted research with students in Japan. They attached rubber bands to the sides of their fa the face with adhesive bandages and then ran them either over the head to lift the facial muscles or under the chin to constrict the facial muscles. What they found was it confirmed the facial feedback effect, the tendency of facial muscle states to trigger corresponding feelings such as fear, anger, or happiness. 
really fascinating stuff if you think about it. Most students reported feeling more happy than sad when their cheeks were raised upward. Most students reported feeling more sad than happy when their cheeks were pulled downwards. So um, that's really fascinating to think about. So those facial muscle states, if we're smiling or frowning kind of thing, can actually trigger different emotions for us. How do facial expressions influence our feelings? A hearty smile made not just with the mouth, but with raised cheeks that sort of crinkle the eyes, enhance positive feel feelings even more when you are reacting to something pleasant or funny. When smiling, people more quickly understand sentences that describe pleasant events. Now the behavior feedback effect, what is that? It's the tendency of our behavior to influence our own and others' thoughts, feelings, and actions. So for example, walking for a few minutes with short shuffling steps, keeping your eyes downcast. Um, now what, I'm sorry, I, should, I read that wrong. This is like for an example for you to do. Try walking for a few minutes with short shuffling steps, keeping your eyes downcast. Now walk around taking long strides with your arms swinging and your eyes looking straight ahead. And notice whether or not you feel a mood shift. Um, going through the motions can actually awaken your emotions. So something really to think about if you're feeling down and changing some of your actual physical behavior can actually change your emotions. How can I make use of the behavior feedback effect and facial feedback effect? Use your understanding of them to make your life better. Everyday life can be better. Use your understanding of the feedback effects to become more empathic. Let your own face mimic another person's expression. Acting as another helps us feel what others feel. Okay, so to our learning target reviews. Much of our communication is through body movements, facial expressions, and voice tones. Even seconds long filmed slices of behavior can reveal feelings. Women tend to read emotional cues more easily and to express more empathy. <clears throat> Excuse me. The meaning of gestures varies with culture, but facial expressions such as those of happiness and fear are pretty common over the world, around the world. Cultures also differ in the amount of emotion they express. Finally, research on the facial feedback effect shows our facial expressions can trigger emotional feelings and signal our body to respond accordingly. We also mimic others' expressions, which helps, helps us empathize. A similar behavior feedback effect is the tendency of behavior to influence our own and others' thoughts, feelings, and actions. And that's it. Thanks so much for listening. Take care.